we're studying is trigeminal autonomic cephalgia, so which would include disorders like cluster headache, which is also called a suicide headache. In fact, in cluster headache, the intensity of pain is gonna be 10 on 10, and the patient is gonna be begging for pain relief, and he's also gonna tell you, the doctor, I know that you will give me pain relief right now, but the attack would come again after a few hours or on the next day, and he says that I'm so fed up of enduring this severe attacks of pain that I'm ready to kill myself rather than endure the pain. So during this discussion of cluster headache, you will hear me talking about nerve blocks. I mean, in no other variety of headache do you read about nerve blocks being used to prevent episodes of headache. You don't read about lithium being used in preventive therapy for headache. But in this topic of cluster headache, extremely painful presentation with deep-seated retroorbital pain and the patient says, I feel as if somebody is drilling a hole in my eye. Two very peculiar things would be discussed in the prevention part that is nerve blocks and use of lithium. Then as far as the attack frequency and the duration of attacks are concerned, they are different between cluster headache and paroxysmal hemicrania. Hemicrania as the name suggests would make you think that probably we are talking about migraine also but the point is in migraine there would be no autonomic features present. Here there would be pain on one side of the head, it would going to be sudden. The attack frequency and the duration of attacks from cluster headache, I mean, what are the technical differences would be discussed subsequently, but there would be autonomic symptoms described here like conjunctival injection, tearing or nasal stuffiness, etc., which would not be present with respect to cases of migraine. Then would be a disorder where you might be having as much as 20 going up to 200, 200 attacks per day. Though what will happen now is that the attacks might be only for a fraction of a second. But it's going to be extremely painful and disconcerting for a patient to endure 20 to 200. I mean, the range is 3 to 200. But anyway, the point is, as you go down in this list, as you go down in this list, the number of attacks per day increase and the frequency, I mean, the attack frequency is increasing, duration is reducing. I repeat again, as you go down in the disorder, you will notice a pattern. The number of attacks per day will keep on increasing. Like in cluster attack, I, I might be saying one attack per day or one attack every alternate day on the lower side. And in SUNCT, I might be describing that the attacks might be 20 going up to 200 per day, though the duration will be relatively lesser. And SUNCT would be short lasting unilateral neurology form headache with conjunctival injection and tearing. There would be redness of the eye, there would be tearing uh, that is uh, watering from the eye or epiphora. And if these two symptoms are not present, like the patient is still experiencing a neurology form headache, extremely deep seated pain with respect to the eye, maybe on the frontal area. But at the same time, if there is no conjunctival injection and tearing present, but there are other autonomic symptoms like ptosis present in a patient, then we call this SUNA. The main difference between SUNCT and SUNA would be that uh, conjunctival injection and tearing would be present or would not be present. Uh, the attack frequency would still remain the same going up to as many as 200 attacks per day. The duration of attacks would however be for most of the time few seconds to few minutes. So these are three primary disorders that we'll talk about and you will notice that in all of them the duration of attack will be much much shorter as compared to migraine. When I was describing uh, migraine i said minimum duration of attack can be four hours upper limit going up to 72 hours so in migraine the lower limit was four hours here like when i described cluster headache to you subsequently uh, i will say that the duration of attack can be 15 minutes to 180 minutes the point is 180 minutes is three hours so in cluster headache the max duration is three hours whereas in migraine the minimum is four hours i repeat that again in cluster headache, the duration will be mentioned between 15 minutes to 180 minutes. So the max duration is 3 hours of an attack. It might be occurring more than one attack per day. But the point is that the minimum duration of attack of migraine was discussed as 4 hours. Here the max attack would be something like in range of 15 minutes to 180 minutes. And the frequency would be ranging. You know, migraine is not going to occur every day. It's not going to be two attacks of migraine every day or three attacks of migraine every day. Uh, or you, you would not read about outrageous things like 20 attacks of migraine every day. Here, the frequency will be usually more than one per day. So I'm just putting a gross figure at the moment. Plus, this would be associated with the autonomic features developing in a patient. From the autonomic perspective, I can say paracetamol uh, myelitic stimulation would contribute to features like lacrimation. So a patient of cluster headache who's having deep-seated retroorbital pain might be pressing on his one hand with his fingers or with his hand and saying that it hurts so bad. That's why he's pressing so that he can get or he expects some relief from pressing on the eyeball. You will also notice that when he removes his hand, you will notice a lot of epiphora, watering from the eye and even his hands may be wet with the tearing that is occurring from the eye. So there would be lacrimation. 
along with that redness of the eye will also be noticed by you that is what i meant by the word conjunctival injection and apart from this the person might say that his ears feel full oral fullness and because there is lot of tearing in the eye then uh, there is a possibility that the tears might flow via the puncta into the nasal lacrimal duct and this person might even tell you regarding experiencing nasal stuffiness so these are couple of features that would be autonomic ones that are experienced by patients uh, who we are going to discuss subsequently namely cluster redneck paroxysmal hemicrania and sunct in fact one more peculiar thing that i can say about sunct at the moment is that sore tooth character of pain might be described i mean the sore tooth word we read so many times so in ecg we read that with the uh, atrial flutter uh, in diverticulosis we read about, read about it with barium enema but sore tooth character of pain is described for sunct slash suna with the difference being only with respect to conjunctival injection and tearing not being present and that is when you use the word suna in some patients you might be having predominantly parasympathetic nervous system activation or it can be that the sympathomimetic nervous system drive can be lesser because of which ptosis can also be experienced by a patient lots of time because the duration of pain is short lasting it's occurring daily there is a possibility a nasal congestion is also present so misdiagnosis misdiagnosis of uh, trigeminal autonomic cephalgias with sinusitis is possible and one clear distinction would be sinusitis will respond to decongestants sinusitis will respond to decongestants but trigeminal autonomic cephalgias would not show any response to we'll have to use specific management it will not show response to decongestants i repeat again most of the time if a person has daily headache you know short lasting related to eye you might be thinking he could be having sinusitis also especially if he's complaining of nasal stuffiness present or oral fullness present so lots of time we might think it's a ent problem so that that has to be kept in mind that missed diagnosis with sinusitis can occur though x-ray of the paranasal sinuses or if and doubt a mri of the paranasal sinuses can help you in differentiating